Hello guys, welcome back to the Dev Mr. YouTube channel. And this is uh, another video in my CK editor on Django series. So, so far in this series, we've been able to accomplish quite a lot. So, this might be the last video, I don't know yet, but so far in the series, we've been able to set up a CK editor for our admin dashboard, set it up for our front end as well, as you can see right here. And then also, uh, we've been able to set up CK editor to be able to upload images, as you can see, one, two, three. And I also showed you guys how to install and set up the code snippets plugin and also how to add code highlights, as you can see, using various themes. And then uh, I, in one of the previous videos, I also explained how you can set up and install the HTML5 video plugin for it to be able to use it to upload videos through your text editor. As, uh, as you can see, this video was uploaded using the Django CK editor, and as you can see, it works great. Okay, and then also, I showed you guys how to use the YouTube plugin, how you can download it, how you can set it up to embed YouTube videos through your. Uh, through the Django CK editor. And then finally, in the last video, I showed you how to set up the copy to clipboard feature for your CK editor. As you can see, every code snippet section, this one and this one, it has this copy to clipboard functionality. When you click on it, it copies the code. And uh, yeah, that's it. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can host your media files on Cardinary for your Django project. So one of the reasons why you want to do this is uh, most hosting platforms, they do not help you to manage your media files. An example is Heroku. I think uh, Heroku, I used it once and after 24 hours, it deletes the static files. The same thing with Railway. Vessel will not even allow you to do that. When you uh, upload your project to Vessel, it keeps the static files. The static files will still be there. That's your, where your styles CSS, main.js, etc. Uh, those ones will still be working, but after you've uploaded it, if you try to add any image to it, like maybe uh, your project, for example, has a dashboard, and within that dashboard, users can upload, uh, provide pictures, this will not allow you to actually do that. Okay, yeah, to not allow you to do that, it will give you an error, and I will show the error in a later video that's on another series that I am. Um, Doing now, that's uh, my best self hosting platform series. You can check that out. I'll also leave a link to it down in the description. In that series, I'm going to be showing you guys all you need to know about hosting projects on Vessel projects such as the Django project, the Flax project, React project, NestJS project, etc., and many more things. So let's focus on what we have for today, which is how to host media files on Cloud9 projects. So if you're following the series so far, can see this is our project. Uh, let me stop the development server for now. So, as you can see, first thing that we have to do, we have to install the cloud, Django Cloudinary Storage, which is a package that will help us to connect to Cloudinary platform. So, just copy this to this place and install it. Okay, after it has been installed successfully. See, next thing that you have to do is now it depends on what you want to use Cloudinary for. Like, if you are using a platform like Heroku, for example, then I will advise that you store both your static files and your media files on Cloudinary. But if you are using a platform like Vessel, you can leave your static files in your Vessel and uh, in your local storage. That's you can leave your static file within your project while. The media files that will be uploaded by users in production environment, we can store those ones on Cardinal. So it's something like that, that I'm going to be doing now. So I'm going to be using this second one right here. What you need to do is copy these two. Go to your settings.py and then under here, yeah, space it right here. Right. Then the next thing we have to confirm that this is in our project urls.py file. So um I believe we've added it in a previous video, but just to be sure, let me go and check. Yes, you can see here, yeah, it's here already. 
Okay, so the next thing now is we need to create an environment variable. So if you don't know how to create an environment variable, I wrote an article about it. I will leave a link down to it in the description. I also created a YouTube video on it as well. I also leave the link to it. So once you've gone to check out that link and then you've been able to set up uh, environment variables for your Django project, you can come back here and continue. So what you need to do now is create an environment variable and call it development. Give it a key of environment and a value of development. So as you can see, I've done that already here. Where is it? See it right here. So you give it a key of development, not environment. So development. This we are just using this for us to be able to differentiate between our development environment and our production environment. When you posted it, if you are adding this environment variables to production environment, this value will be production. So the next thing that you have to do now, you have to copy this and paste it in your settings.py below your static files configuration. That's right here. So that will be here under media roots. So you paste it in like this. So for now, what this is going to do is that if it checks the environment variable, it checks for its value. If its value is production, then all the media files that will be uploaded will be hosted on Cloudinary. While if it is development, they will be hosted right here. The reason for this is that, you know, Cloudinary is uh, like, we're going to be using the free tier of Cloudinary and while testing, we're going to be uploading a bunch of unnecessary images that you just want to use to test. You don't want to be wasting the space by uploading those images too. So when you do it this way, only during your production environment, that's when the images will be hosted on Cloudinary. So um, next thing I have to do is go to the Cloudinary platform and create a free account. I will leave a link down to it in the description as well. When you go there and you create a free account, you can create it with GitHub or your Google uh, account, or you can also use a email and password. So once you've created it, they will if you go to the dashboard page, you will have access to cloud name, API key, and API secrets. So copy these three values and then create environment variables. Look at it, cloud name, cloud API secrets, and cloud API key. Copy them and place the values in here. So um, I'm going to pause this video for a second so that we add mine. All right, I'll uh, right back. I have added mine to an EMV file. So the next thing that you have to do now is copy this configuration settings and paste it in the settings of py. So I'll just paste mine, it's already here. Just paste it below your database configuration setting. So what this does is that it checks your environment variable for a key that's cloud name. Cloud API key and Cloud API secrets. So it gets those values and place them here. These will be the values that you copy from this part right here. This is the Cloud name, this is the Cloud API key, and this is the Cloud API secret. So remember, like I said, that uh, the way it works, whenever this value that's in your environment variable is equal to production, it's going to hit this right here. So that means uh, in a production environment, it's actually going to be like this. Let me comment this that out, place it like this. So this will actually be working because in a production environment, you will set this to uh, production. So it's actually going to hit this. So uh, I already did that in my EMV file. So I'm trying to mimic a production environment. So let me um, comment this here. Copy this. Paste it in. Okay. So now, uh, let me start my server again. I believe I'm present. Yeah. Okay. So let me start my server again. Python image py server. Okay, so the server has been started again and 
let's test it out let me refresh the page first of all okay so i'm going to be uploading an image here now so let's upload an image see which one am i going to use uh let me use this one oh uh, yeah let me let me use this one okay so to remember you click on this space to send it to the server social is missing send to the server okay uh, i believe it was just my network so um now we can add uh i explained what this part does in the previous video so this is just for specifying the width and height of the image so i want everything to be auto that's 100 percent so now click on okay you can see this image right here, right? Um, let me try. Can I oh, it's like the image is kind of large. That's why it's taking just a bit of time. Uh, testing. Cloudinary hosting. Okay. So now let's click on submit. Okay, as you can see, the should I say the object has been created, that's the post has been created. Look at the text, and this is the image, right? So now if you go to uh let me go to my Cloudinary account. Um okay, I'm gonna pause this video so that I can log in. All right, then, guys, we are back. So, I think I found them back. Okay, okay, it's back. So, as you can see, this is my Cloudinary account. And uh, you go to this media library section, you can see all the images that have been uploaded to your account. So, this ones, all these ones, and these asset sections, and this sample section, those are the ones that came when you like the automatic. They were added when you created your account. They're just like dummy content for you to use to test. So now to see the image that we uploaded, we have to go to this place. Because if you remember from our CK editor, the images are added like this. That's a CK editor. No, okay. Images, uploads, then create another folder. So from here now, if we open this uploads, uh 2023 that's the year 02 that's february then this one should be okay so this is right here this is the image that we just uploaded so let's give it a second and it should open up ah can you see if you check, uh, that means this image right here, this one, is coming from Cloudinary. That's the image has been hosted on Cloudinary and that's where it is getting it from. So if, uh, let's say for example, I put off my data, this image will not be accessible. You'll not be able to get it because it's not coming uh, from your local storage, that's from your system itself. It's coming from an online platform that is coming from Cloudinary. So um, I think that's all for this video. That's just all you need to do for you to start using Cloudinary for hosting your images. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the description and I'll get to you as quickly as I can. So um, I'll see, hopefully, maybe, I'm not sure yet, maybe there'll be a next video in this series after this one. But uh, like I said, you guys can check out the new series that I am making. That's the Vessel Hosting Platform series. If you want to learn how to host your uh, projects for free on Vessel, 
and how you can do a lot of other things such as uh, how you can get uh, databases just uh, subscribe to this channel like this video and share it to go a long way in helping my channel to grow so that i'll keep on bringing awesome content to you guys so till next time